Hey, welcome everyone. It's Gary Shirk coming to you from beautiful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Today I've got something a little different for you guys. You know, for many people who decide to buy property in Puerto Vallarta, their purchase becomes a lot more than just a vacation home. For some, it brings an enhancement in lifestyle and opens up a whole new world of opportunities and experiences. So today we're going to hear firsthand about some of those experiences from my friends Ron and Andrea. Both are U.S. citizens and now both permanent residents of Mexico. And although they still spend time at their home in the United States, they also live six months of the year at their beautiful condo here in Puerto Vallarta. So with that, let's go ahead and hear a little bit about their story. Go ahead. <laughs> My name is Ron Franks. I was born in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. I moved to uh, the D.C. area in 1986 and have been there in Northern Virginia ever since. And this is our friend Frida, who's going to be joining us. <laughs> and I am Andrea Tui. Ron's wife. I was born in Istanbul, Turkey, and I grew up in several different countries uh, for my childhood and ended up back in the D.C. area for college and since then. <laughs> we moved to Mexico part-time in August of 2021 into a condo that we purchased back in 2017. We had been coming down on a regular basis since uh, 2001 and decided to ultimately spend about half our time down here so that's what we're doing now yeah we've been able to do that since uh i retired in 2021 and i went work optional and Ron went work <laughs> optional so last year was the first time that we spent uh probably half of our time here in 2001 2001, yeah. We thought we would take a little vacation, and we were trying to think where we could go. It was a little bit spur of the moment, and Ron said, oh, let's go to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And I said, well, why, Ron? And he said, because that's where the love boat stopped. <laughs> so we, uh, I bought a, actually a package ticket, I think, a mm -hmm. whole tour, and we came here and stayed in the marina, and every evening we'd look over and we'd see... Uh, downtown and so we rented a car which had been the the plan anyway um, and we came downtown every every day and then after that we traveled around Mexico we yep. went to uh, Acapulco Cabo we had been to Cancun Tosco Tosco and we just never forgot about Puerto Vallarta yep. there was something about it that was just different and I think uh, one of the things is that the city was here before the people came it's, yep. it was already a city back in the 1600s very busy, and I think it actually became a city in 1850, so yeah. the culture and the people were already here before the tourists came, and we just loved that. We just decided to come back in 08, and, and it's the only place we've been since. And I was fascinated by um, movies and theater, and of course John Huston, the whole history of John Huston, and the filming of The Night of the Iguana, that was a big thing. Uh, that drew us here. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got to the, into the habit of watching that movie every time we come down, before we came down. And, and at this point, I think we know every We line. can recreate it if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, as with all of Mexico, the people, the culture, and Vallarta is very, uh, was very um, intriguing to us because I'm definitely a city person. Ron too, and so we kind of it has everything. You're you're in a smaller beach town, but you have the culture. You have incredible cuisine. You have wonderful people. You have theater. You have travel. Yeah, a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. and, and it's unique in that you have the uh, ocean meeting the mountains and the yeah. jungle, and it's just yeah. uh, you know it's just beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, uh, one, of, one of my favorite things to do in Puerto Vallarta is to people watch. I, I have a few spots in local bars where I just like to sit and have a, have a few Coronas and watch people walk by. You see a little bit of everything and, and nothing at this point surprises us. But you meet people from all over the world. You meet people of all ages, types. all types, all sexual orientations. Yeah. Uh, just uh, nothing surprises us. And it point. can change depending on what month it is, what time of the year, because there are um, certain times of the year, you know, the influx during high season of uh, um, Canadians and gringos, and then you have Gay Pride uh, Month, and you have, Easter. Easter. and you have <laughs> August when the the Mexican nationals are here for for vacation. It's just a it's a never ending 
parade. And we have April. Holy Week and uh, Easter coming yep. up next week when yep. it's mostly locals. So, yep. yeah, the vibe really changes depending on what time of year it is. Yeah. Well, the funny, the funny thing is, we're not beach people. So people ask us all the time, well, why are you in Puerto Vallarta if you don't like the beach? Well, we, we enjoy seeing the beach and being around the beach. Love the ocean. Um, there's wonderful beach, beaches and beach towns to the north. There's Bucerias, uh, Sayalita, San Pancho, and then down south, there's uh, Boca de Tomatlan and Miss Maloya, Yalapa. Yalapa, Las Animas. Yeah. Well, we love to walk. So we walk an awful lot. We, I guess it's called urban hiking. We um, hike every day around our neighborhood, actually. We're very fortunate because we have the Parque Lazaro Cardenas, also known as the Tile Park or the Mosaic Park, which is right outside our door. And we've got the Isla Quale and the beautiful gardens that have been um, revitalized. So uh, we walk a lot. We can walk blocks and blocks and find new things. Always. Always, always. always yeah. And, um, and there, there are also plenty of free tours, like walking yeah, tours and yeah. city tours. Oh, the art, art walk. Art tours. Art walk. Um, always things to do. And, mm -hmm. and as we said earlier, we're not really beach people, so most of what we do doesn't involve the beach. And there's always something to do. Always. always. We explore a lot. <laughs> Uh, espanol poco. See? And mine, I'm learning. I'm studying every day, and I have a little bit of a um, of a background in in French, so that that's helping me. But it's very important, I think, to uh, learn at least a part of the language or try to uh, assimilate with yeah. that. I think the, I think the local people really appreciate yeah, it when, yeah. you, when you, you try. Yeah. But it is, it is good to have some Spanish because, as Ron said, Puerto Vallarta is a tourist town, but other places, it's very helpful to have Spanish. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, this is a, um, from day one, you know, uh, this is a, an extremely welcoming place. And we now we see people that we know, vendors and things, and they remember us and we remember them. And it's just, uh, it's one of the the beauties of Puerto Vallarta, of this country in general. Yeah, now that we're here so often, uh, you just get to know people. And people remember you and just mm -hmm. you know say hi. And uh, a lot of the bartenders tend to know me at this point. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll cut that part out if my mom watches. But it's just a very friendly town, a very friendly place. So living in Zona Romantica is wonderful for us. We chose to live here. Um, it's a very busy, very touristy uh, part of town. Um, we chose to live in, a, in part of it in a particular building uh, after a lot of research that we um, are right in the middle of it. We can just walk out, but it's also quiet. We can yeah. sleep at night. Yeah, we made sure that the configuration yeah. of our condo uh, gave us a yeah. sleeping area that was kind of shielded because it can get very noisy at night. But we love being around everything. We love being able to walk out our front door and go to any number of restaurants, markets. any number of bars, markets, everything is, is just so close, and, yes. and we love that. We it's really, city really life really on a small scale. <laughs> right, right. Ugh, that's a, that, Gary, now that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know if we have a favorite place, so just too many. We, I love the bakery, Yulo's, that is just literally uh, one road over. Um, we love Don Chava's. Yeah. which is one of our new favorite taco places. Um, we love Memo's, which is a taco stand. Rafa's, which is fish taco stand. Right. There are, um, there's a wonderful uh, Vietnamese just uh, down the block. And great Italian restaurants. Great, great Italian, Italian restaurants. restaurants. And that's one of the things I think we enjoy the most about Puerto Vallarta is you can spend $10 and, and get a great dinner. <laughs> As far as favorites go, I don't know if we have favorites because no. they're just I mean, too the many range options. of cuisines yeah. and whatever prices are people, literally whatever. People you often want. say to me, "Well, don't you guys get tired of Mexican food down there?" <laughs> and that's just one of the options. I mean, yeah. there's pretty much whatever you could you could want is available. So we, um, when we sh grocery shop, we take advantage of everything. We usually do every week or two weeks. We'll go to take a taxi to La Comer um, or Costco, which of course. Uh, La Comer is gorgeous. It's like any wonderful um, grocery store you'd find in the States or Canada. But we also uh, 
do a lot of shopping at the Mercado Emiliana Zapata, which is the neighborhood market, large market, and it's a couple blocks up. And there we buy our fruits, our vegetables. We went and bought uh, some good local homemade cheese. So that, I think, and the quality of the, the produce is excellent. Oh, it's great. Excellent. So that, I and, think, and is and a that, pretty good bargain because we got a big pile of stuff yeah, the last time very for affordable. $13. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. The research, the research god. <laughs> well, Go we, we always fantasized about buying a place down here, but it was just that it was a fantasy. And if you walk around town, you'll see several real estate offices where they put the listings in the window. And we would always look at those listings and just kind of dream about what it would be like. So uh, one one day, I think it was in 2016, we decided to uh, reach out to a local real estate agent, and we kind of played a game where we pretended we were on HDTV and we were a couple <laughs> going around, you know, looking at properties. And But it, it wasn't really real until we were sitting at a local bar and uh, after a few tequilas, I turned to Andrea and I said, you know, I think we can do this. And she looked at me like, are you crazy? <laughs> but, but the more and more we thought about it, we yeah. did our research and we just knew that at that time it was the right time to buy as things were just starting to get crazy in terms of prices. So and you have to know what you want Yes. and your budget and you have to be on the same page and you have to stick with it. Yeah, and you, yeah. And you, and you have to you have to kind of um, focus in on where you yeah. want to be because the neighborhoods are so different. And I think that's something that people would uh, find interesting that are not familiar with Puerto Vallarta. The colonia yeah. is, uh, a neighborhood is called a colonia. They're very, very different even though they're very close. So we loved this neighborhood. We've been here many, many times so we decided this was it. We didn't want hills. Hills are pretty brutal, yeah. and they don't get easier the older you get. So we wanted something flat, and uh, we did our research. We found people that we trusted, yep. people that we worked with that we could uh, rely on to help us with legal and real estate issues. Um, I did a lot of the research myself as far as uh, the, the, the legality of things, and we decided on this development, which has been uh, fantastic. We've been yes. very happy. We bought pre-construction, which a lot of people say, stay away, it's scary, it's scary. We had a fantastic We had a great experience. Yeah. Um, on Facebook, there are a lot of experts that know nothing, and they will tell you that it's scary. But for us, you know, it was scary. I mean, after we bought and went back to the States, I remember one, one night waking up staring at the ceiling. <laughs> at 2 a.m. saying, oh my God, what have we done? But uh, after I calmed down and, and walked myself off the ledge, it, it's, it's been great. I and mean, now I can't imagine not yeah, having this yeah. in our lives. It's been, it's been wonderful. Oh, we, we, we couldn't be happier. I mean, we, we really got lucky. We bought right at the right time. Uh, the investments turned out to be a very strong investment for us. Uh, we originally planned on renting. That was the entire, that was our calculus, was that we were gonna rent and help pay the bills, but then after investing time and energy to, to furnish the place and get it to where we wanted it to be, we didn't want strangers in our condo. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that's probably not the smartest. Uh, no, but we're spending more and more time here, so it, it, yeah. it's, it makes sense. Yeah, we just, we just love it. Yeah. We're so happy we did it. We had a wonderful experience from start to finish with our, our realtor and notario, everything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the feet are free. <laughs> but the feet get sore. The feet get sore. On the cobblestone, that could be a problem. <laughs> but we, we, we tend to take the yellow taxis. Yep. Um, and I know that Uber is, is usually cheaper, and people will, will say Uber's better. But we, we love the yellow taxis. We like talking to the drivers. Uh, they'll, they'll let you practice. Yeah, Spanish. they let us it's, practice our Spanish. And it's very, very affordable. You can go uh, pretty bar and for yeah. $10, $8, um, yeah, it's, very it's very affordable. affordable and they're everywhere. The, the yellow taxis are all over. We've never yeah. had a problem finding one and the drivers are always friendly, yeah. um, very helpful. So it's kind of a fun experience to take the yellow taxis. Oh, as far as the safety here, um, absolutely we feel safe. Um, I can walk around by myself. Uh, we walk around everywhere. We feel very safe, but it's like anywhere. Uh, it's like our our neighborhood in the in the U.S. It, depending on where you are, it's just common sense. You don't go to a sketchy neighborhood, or you don't go somewhere, you know, in the middle of the night where it might be dangerous. We feel very safe here. And I, I think it's important to say Puerto Vallarta is not paradise. I mean, it has crime like any beach town, any city. 
Uh, fortunately, most of it's petty crime, like pickpocketing and that sort of thing. So you have to make sure your wallet is secure, watch your iPhone, that sort of thing, and be aware. And there's no shortage of crazy. We have crazy people wandering around, just like we do back in the U.S. So yeah, we tend to recognize them after a while, and it's best to kind of steer clear. But uh, overall, we, we've never felt unsafe. We've never Ever. felt threatened or anything. We, and we've been coming here for a very long time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, any visitor or potential uh, resident, future resident to this wonderful and welcoming country needs to adapt and realize that things are different. Um, I grew up in seven different countries before I was 18 and something that my parents instilled in my sisters and me very early on is that you have to respect the host, the host country. And it's very important to immerse yourself as much as possible in the culture, the people, the language, the traditions, uh, and realize that you're a guest here and it's a privilege. Um, also, it's important, I think, to ensure that you're immersed in the local culture and everything that goes on and not just in the bubble of an expat community or something that you're super comfortable with. Yeah, I think it's important to always remember you're a guest. Even though we're permanent residents, we're yeah. still a guest. And there's nothing worse than the stereotypical ugly American who's uh, upset because something didn't happen right on time or they're unhappy with the, this or that. Uh, so we always try to keep that in mind and we try yeah. to be respectful. And well, for, First, I would say um, travel around Mexico as much yeah. as possible. Mexi One of the things that's very surprising about Mexico that most people uh, might not realize is it's a very big country. There's 32 states. They're all very different. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I learned a lot about that in recent years. You can't just say, I'm moving to Mexico, because they're very, very different. So if, it, if it's at all possible, it's good to visit different states. We were able to do some of that, right? and you'll find that they're very different. In Climate, terrain, traditions, the culture, the people, uh, the dialects, food. everything. It's very yeah. different, uh, more so than the states, I would say. And mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to find the place that is best for you. So we traveled, before we settled in Puerto Vallarta, we went several times to Acapulco, um, Cabo, Cancun. We had both been there uh, before we were married, and then we went together, Tosco. And then uh, recently we've, as we've mentioned, explored um, Guadalajara, Mexico City. We just came back from Mexico City, which is phenomenal. I mean, I think uh, people, uh, I know we didn't learn about a lot of it in in school growing up. Magnificent. I mean, there's so much uh, rich culture and museums and uh, I still can't get over that Parque Chapultepec, which is the large park, is two times larger than Central Park in New York City. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, traveling within Mexico is very affordable. That's something yeah. that's uh, very easy to do and we're trying to use our home here in Puerto Vallarta as a home base and travel as much as possible. And so far, it's been fantastic. Yeah. Very affordable, um, great people. Of course, you have to be careful. You know, we're not out in the middle of the night uh, where we shouldn't be, but uh, it's definitely been, been fantastic so far. We're looking forward to many more states. Yes. yes. <laughs> So we have a lot of places we uh, shop, and we've always pretty much been able to find what we need. Uh, of course, Costco, La Comer, the for Home, food. Home Depot. There's a Home Depot. Home Depot, the local markets. There's also a wonderful mall, um, and we have had great success at Liverpool, which is a is a big. Um, Department stores, like kind of like, like Macy's, Macy's, yeah. Like Macy's. And then La Isla Mall, um, we just went there recently, and, and there's an HMM, there's a Birkenstock, there's uh, high-end things, just like you would you would expect, you know, at home. Yeah. And then Amazon, 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 Amazon Max, Amazon Max. Yeah, it's great. great. Yeah, we've had great experience with that. Yeah, definitely. So and we actually we actually furnished our condo all from Liverpool mostly, with one mostly. very wonderful salesman, Daniel. But people also have um, furniture made for them. Um, there's there's organizations that will help you, you know, uh, stores that will help you furnish. There's designers. But um, we have really had pretty much luck finding everything that we need. Yeah, there's really no mm -hmm. need to bring things down. No, you can no. You find pretty much whatever you need. So we um, participate in the Vallarta Food Bank, 
which is a great, great organization and has evolved since the, it was started in the pandemic. And also Vallarta Abuelas, which is a wonderful organization for underprivileged kids um, and their families, and also some kids that are that live off the street. So we're we're pretty active in that as far as donations and uh, participation in in the various educational and uh, actually fun things for the kids. Yeah, what's great about yeah. Vallarta Abuelos is it's targeted. Like you can yeah. you can help out a specific child, yeah. or you can help with a specific event. And uh, it's just uh, great to stop by and visit the kids. So fortunately, we haven't had a lot of experience with uh, healthcare and dental, but uh, a couple, a little bit that we've had, we were very, very happy with. Uh, one day, I was flossing in the bathroom, and one of my teeth fell out, my crown. So I went to a local dentist, and I walked right in. I walked right in. Uh, they took me in, and she uh, took care of me, and yeah. and. and Put my crown back in, and my dentist uh, back in the states actually, uh, you know, made a comment that she did a great job. She really yeah. did a nice job. Um, so that's really the extent of my experience. And mine, I a couple of years ago punctured my eardrum stupidly with a Q-tip because I turned around and hit my elbow on the bathroom door. And so a couple of days after that happened, I said to Ron, "I really think I have to go to the clinic." downstairs because we have a, a, an excellent clinic downstairs so I did and before I knew it uh, they had looked in my ear and they said we're gonna have an ENT specialist come uh, would you like to see him tomorrow morning here at the clinic in his office or in your condo and I said well I'll just come down here at nine o'clock tomorrow morning and wonderful doctor um, came to the clinic with a portable microscope. He looked in my ear. He gave me then some antibiotics, told me exactly, and gave a full report in English for me to take back to uh, the United States. And I called and had an appointment waiting for me there. Everything was fine. It healed perfectly, but wonderful. And when I had the punctured eardrum, it cost $40. It was incredible. My crown, I think, was $25. $25. So, yeah, I mean, it's... uh Quite a bit different than, than right. the states. Yeah. But but excellent care and excellent facilities. Yes. I would say life is short, and if you're thinking about it, just uh, go for it. If you would have told me this 20 years ago, you never would have believed it. And as Andrea would, would say, I'm, I'm a ponderer. I tend to take a long time to make decisions, just my nature. But I just felt this was right, and we, we dove in, and we couldn't be happier we did. So uh, if you're thinking about it, uh, do your research. Don't be, don't be afraid. Uh, be careful on Facebook and social media because there are a lot of people that know absolutely nothing right, that right. will steer you away when they themselves have no experience whatsoever. So make uh, sure you have a really good team helping you. Yes. Good. You need a really good realtor. You need a good immigration lawyer. Yes. I mean, if you're trying to get residency. And you just need to know what you're doing. It's yeah. hard work. It, it's it's not something you can just casually you know yeah. slide through. You have to do your research. Yep. And it's hard work, but it's it's well worth it. Yes. In, in the end, yes. yes.